Hey everybody, it's Extra Rounds here on UFC Fight Pass. I'm TJ DeSantis along with the editor-in-chief of The Ring Magazine. It is Doug Fisher. Uh, to his right, it is the promoter uh, for 360 Promotions, Tom Loeffler. Uh, he's the man who puts together Hollywood Fight Nights. That is coming your way uh, Saturday or today or tomorrow whenever you uh, watch this. And uh, to his right is uh, the man in the booth on the call with myself and Doug Fisher. It is Abel Sanchez. Uh, Tom, happy to have you here as we get ready for Hollywood Fight Nights. King Callum Walsh back in action. And, uh, you know, th this show has been prominently featured on UFC Fight Pass. And, you know, for a, uh, a long time, uh, the UFC's uh, direct-to-consumer platform was reserved for mixed martial arts shows. And, you know, over the last uh, few years, we've seen that change. And uh, boxing has become a, a very big part of the identity of UFC Fight Pass. And it's because of the way that you uh, promote your show. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier off the air. And, and Dana has said this time and time again. You bring this boxing type of or this UFC type of mindset to promoting boxing and it it's it, you know I'm speaking as someone who's an MMA fan you, you've captivated my attention because I'm able to see these young boxers not only just Callum Walsh but um, you know Umar Chambekov who's also won this card yeah. we're able to see these uh, very talented boxers tested on the way up with you know no pow powder puff type opponents you know uh, aesthetically uh, you know appealing records on both sides it's just very different from what I've experienced watching uh, up and coming boxing and you know I'm curious what has you know made you come to the the table with Hollywood Fight Nights with this sort of uh, MMA uh, mindset to, to pro boxing? Well, this is a great, great platform, TJ. You know, having boxing on UFC Fight Pass, we uh, have a structure to it. We can keep the guys busy. We can build their careers uh, naturally against competitive fights. You see Callum Walsh is fighting a guy that already fought Regis Progray. Yeah. You know, yeah. world-class fighters like that. So this will be our 10th episode uh, coming up on August 26th. And... Uh, the uh, seventh one featuring King Callum Walsh. So Dana loves what we're doing. He, he loves the continuity of the fights. He loves the, competitive of the f competitiveness of the fights and the energy in the crowd. We'll be sold out again uh, at Commerce Casino. And, uh, you know, we just keep them going. It's six fights uh, televised on, uh, on UFC Fight Pass, and it's just a, a continuity with exciting fights, competitive fights, and a uh, great atmosphere in the crowd. You know, I know Dana's a big fan of those uh, numbers when it comes to the records of, of the fighters. And, right. you know, you mentioned the guy that's standing in front of um, Callum tomorrow night. Like, he's got 30-plus fights in, yeah. in, uh, against, you know, tough uh, opponents. Uh, it is interesting to see that because, I mean, Doug, you can speak to this. Like, the, the promoter's mindset really wasn't necessarily to, to put someone who could be a golden goose like Callum, you know, down the road and fight potentially for a world title at 7-0. and Like, why take? a big risk this is different yeah and i mean in recent decades in boxing um the promoter is looking to protect a fighter especially and it's it's kind of weird the the better the fighter is the more talent the fighter is the bigger like <laughs> the amateur protected. background they have yeah. the more protect <laughs> right. the more protected they are and it's strange and it's kind of like um the system we have in boxing and have probably had for like, you know, the last 25 years or so is you, you've, you've got um, fighter, you know, promising potential star fighter signed um, to a promoter who is signed exclusively to a network. And right. you have this united front of let's build this guy up, build his record. The most important thing is that he's undefeated and we want to create... We're not going to really put him in there with anybody, anybody that we think can beat him, right? But at the same time, we're going to say this guy's the best out there. This guy don't 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 bring up other fighters uh, from other networks or other promotional companies. Don't mention their top fighters who may um, occupy the same weight class, right? We're going to build this guy up, and at the same time, we're going to tell you. No, he's the best. He's the only champion in this division. And not only that, he's pound for pound, number one. <laughs> it's a and, contradiction. And he's one of the best of all time. <laughs> right. And yeah. and and the, the mindset is if you do that, you're going to, you know, the public will buy it. And, um, you know, not just buy it, but buy it literally. And, like, you make him into, like, a, like a Floyd Mayweather pay-per-view star. Right. And, and I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened with Mayweather because there was a time when Mayweather – was fighting everybody out there and beating guys because he, he was a generational talent. He did that for lighter weight classes. But he himself at some point when he moved up in weight was kind of like, 
you know what? I get paid the same, you know, by my promoter or by HBO or by Showtime for fighting this guy who I know I can beat than I'll be paid for this guy who might beat me. So why would I fight the guy who might beat me? Right. Let me take the road of least resistance because as long as I protect this record and I proclaim myself the best ever and I'm pound for pound this and blah, I'm Money Mayweather, um, I'm really going to get rich. I'm going to get filthy rich. And that's exactly what happened. So that became the blueprint. Um, but the thing is, is that the public wasn't buying it. Um, maybe it worked for Floyd Mayweather, but there's only one Floyd Mayweather. Right. And um, I think a lot of longtime boxing fans, diehards and, and hardcore fans, they became disillusioned. Um, and I actually think, you know, that that huge, you know, billion dollar fight between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, that that turned off a lot of casual fans. We lost a lot. And I saw during the 2000s when when the relationship between the promoters and the networks became too cozy, where like the networks weren't demanding the best fight, the best quality um, control. Right. Yeah. When when once the networks lost that quality control. I saw the Zufa-led um, UFC kind of just swoop right in there and say, guess what? You know what? Our champions are going to be fighting champions. Right. Our champions aren't worried about losing. If it's a great fight, we're going to bring them back. Um, they were, the UFC was more concerned with fan service, and, and that played out in the arenas. I would go to a, 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 a fight card, a USC fight card, and um, I didn't know anybody on there, but I'm, uh, what struck me is that the arena was 75% full or even 100% from, capacity. From the beginning of the night. Right, during the undercard. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. this is unheard yeah. of with boxing. <laughs> right. yeah. But there were a few shows, even early in the decade. I remember there was a UFC show the night before Zab Judah fought Kostya Zhu for the Undisputed Junior Welterweight Championship. And I could not believe the difference in atmosphere. Both cards, I think the UFC card was on a Friday night. This is at the MGM Grand mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, UFC was Friday night. Randy Couture was on that card. Uh, Carlos Newton was on that card. BJ Penn was on this card. Great fights. Right. All of them. Every fight was, was awesome. I didn't even know what I'm looking at, right? right. I'm just the boxing guy <laughs> sitting there. But I was into it in part because the crowd was so into it. The energy was unbelievable. Um, the fight that I was super into that weekend was Kostya Zhu versus Zab Judah. I was a big Kostya Zhu guy. Mm. And Kostya Zhu was an underdog, right? I'm like, man, I hope my man Kostya wins, you know. And he did, but the atmosphere was, was like it, the, the, the Grand Garden Arena was dead for this, like, a great boxing matchup. Mm. Um, it was, you know, a sensational matchup on paper. Turned out to be a, a two-round blowout, but the undercard sucked. I don't even remember what happened in the undercard. Right. The arena was empty, drafty, cold. It was dark. Like, there wasn't even, like, you know, like, production value inside the arena put on by the promoters, and I was just like, this is bad. That was 2001, and I would say by 2005, 2006, I would, I would say that that MMA was beginning to surpass boxing. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm being long-winded. Um, I do that. But um, I like what Tom is doing um, in, in sort of modeling um, his boxing shows, even though this is really a developmental series, but making sure that it's very lively in the arena, making sure that every bout on the card is 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 – is it's like a, it's a good matchup. It's going to be a competitive fight, um, and as you spoke of um, earlier, the, when you get that, you when you get competitive fights, the fighters that win they have to earn that victory, right? Yeah. So they become better fighters, and we've literally seen guys like Omar Figueroa. He's a featherweight prospect. Well, guess what? He wasn't a prospect the first time he fought. Omar Trinidad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why do I say Omar Figueroa? Because that is yeah. an actual fighter. Omar Trinidad. Forgive me, Omar. Yeah. Um, Trinidad, the first time he fought on, on one of your shows, it was just a four-rounder. Yeah. And he was an entertaining guy yeah. who sold some tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he had this desire. He wanted to test himself. He wanted to get better. He knew the way to get better is to, to be in tough fights. And with each successive bout, this guy got better and better. And you see that progression over a short period of time, yeah. really over the span of 12 yeah. to 18 months, Four round level to six round level to he's at the eight round level now, um, 
and he headlined a show earlier this yep. year, and um, it was a, it was a really good, you know, an eight round fight. The fight went the di- went the distance, and the guy who lost is fighting tomorrow. Yeah, that's you know a, why? Because the guy put up a fight, right? That's and a that's point. that's the MMA mindset there. You yeah. know, a l- loss is not in uh, the end of your career. That's that's the point I wanted to make, uh, Doug, and touch on what you said, and and TJ, what you're saying is like, what's the difference with? Uh, uh, Hollywood Fight Nights is because I, I really believe in Dana's philosophy at the UFC, having the best fight the best. Right. You know, the atmosphere in Boston was tremendous. And, you know, if you lose in the UFC, you can be back two months later on another TV show, a, a t- televised fight, in yep. another championship fight or, or another high caliber fight, and you don't lose a step in your career. In boxing, you lose, and you're like, might be two years, and you might not be on TV until you kind of right. work yourself way back. Yeah. And, that's and boxing fans have kind of been conditioned to, like, jump off a bandwagon right, when a guy right. loses. Like, yeah. It's well, weird. In, in yeah. MMA, you can come out looking better even for a loss. There right. are plenty of guys that's the that, way it should be. that have, a, have a loss, but if they, you know, fought valiantly and people appreciate it, uh, stock goes up. Yeah. You know, the, I, the I should say up. that's the way it used to be in boxing as right. well. So it's like you're – you're 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 borrowing the MMA model now, mm-hmm. but what you're really doing is old school boxing promotion. From before, where, yeah. you know, it's like originally the promoter didn't have paper on any of the fight. The promoter's job was just to you know get the venue and put the fights together, and and um, you know it was the management that was tied to the fighter or whatever. The promoter wanted the best fight possible because. That put butts in the seats. That's how everybody got paid. Like, hey, we have to have a really good main event and a good undercard to fill up Madison Square Garden. And if if the if the house is packed, then we all eat. We all get paid. And uh, at some point, boxing kind of lost its way. But I do think it's finding its way again. And it's uh, it's very refreshing to hear a young fighter like. Callum Walsh say, I don't care who I fight. <laughs> he said that, yeah. If you want to step me up to 10 or 12 round level next, I'm ready to do it. And if I do lose, I don't think I will, but if I do lose, I, I'm okay with it. You know, right. if I if I give 100% and it's a good fight, I can live with myself, I'll come back. And I think that's the kind of fighter that um, will not lose fans when he loses, right? right? Like with Arturo Gatti, right? right. It's like Absolutely. he had fans. They were ride or die with Arturo <laughs> yeah. Gatti because Arturo was Gatti was going to bleed, fight. right? Yeah. He's going to spill some blood. Yeah. It's going to be dramatic. Yeah. You're going to get a knockout. But he might lose, you know? And um, they had his back because he gave so much 100%. of himself. Yeah, and, and you see that with Adon Ochoa now fighting uh, on the show where he was in the main event against uh, Omar Trinidad. Yeah. He wound up losing but was an exciting fight. Put up a good effort. He uh, was a popular fighter here. So now he's in another good fight. And so there's no reason we, we put him right back in. And uh, I think the fans are going to have a, a, a treat with all these matchups uh, tomorrow. You know, that's the other thing, too, that I think you're selling, Tom. Not only are you selling up-and-coming prospects in boxing that people need to keep their eye on and, you know, a television show that's worth watching, but if you are in Southern California and can come out to one of these events, yeah. it, it's one of the best atmospheres uh, of any fight night. And this is a city where there's a lot going on in yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah, you're competing true. with everything, yeah. you know. Uh, we're, we're approaching the end of summer here. You know, the, the Dodgers are in town. You know, the Angels are down the road. There's, you know, concerts, concerts every single night. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, you you have to bring that uh, excitement to get people through the door. And, and, you know, time and time again, you're putting in, uh, you know, a button every seat. And yep. you're even getting celebrities to yeah. come out Yeah, I was as about well. to say that. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a lot of USC celebrities uh, tomorrow night. So uh, we're excited about that. And uh, we might even have a UFC announcer uh, tomorrow night. So oh, cool. looking forward to uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to. Um, uh, de- definitely uh, looking forward to this show at Commerce Casino. So uh, are, are you saying it's time to <laughs> tune in? It's time. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Buffer might. Uh, you know, his brother, Michael, is over in Poland for the Usyk fight. Oh, wow. So yeah. Michael's That's, over there. Yeah. But we might uh, have a, a guest appearance by, uh, by Bruce Buffer. Tony Ferguson is uh, scheduled to come. Uh, Cheeto. Chido Vera yeah. is looking to come. He just uh, had a huge win last weekend at UFC 292, yeah. so he might be celebrating a little bit. It's the opposite. So Callum went to that show right. to watch it, and uh, Cheeto fought on that show. He was going to watch Callum fight on this show. So I like that. That'll be interesting. Jorge Mas- Masvidal is uh, training at the Wild Card Gym. Yep. He might come. Uh, Tabitha Ritchie yep. might come. I mean, you know all the names better than I do, and uh, we're excited about that. That's really what goes into this whole cross-promotion when the UFC Fight Pass fans can see the UFC fighters at a boxing match 
they know, okay, there's something interesting going on here. No, without question. Um, Abel, I want to ask you this question because we talked a lot about uh, promoting these athletes and, and giving them tough fights on, on the way up. You know, I've seen a lot of athletes on the MMA side um, take, you know, some easy fights on the way up to the UFC. And then once they get inside the octagon, they face adversity for the first time. And it's kind of like a deer in headlights. Do, do you feel like boxing has ever done a disservice to some of those athletes that, that haven't had maybe a, a tough fight until they're, you know, finding themselves a, a, against a top-ranked opponent? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, especially in recent times. It's been, a, it's been a while since we've had a promoter that actually uh, is putting the fighters in the tough fights at the grassroots level. Uh, when you get to 19, 20, and 0, then finally put them in the fight. We're actually watching fighters in four-round and six-round fights in difficult fights, which develops future stars. And, uh, and it makes them work harder. Not only that, this UFC, UFC Fight Pass platform allows them to showcase their skills. And they're he's slowly building the kind of stable that is that is needed at this level to be able to get to Callum to a title shot. Yeah, no, without question. And, you know, there's that old saying from the movie Fight Club, like, what do you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Well, you can be in plenty of pro fights and never actually experience a, a fight. And uh, it's, it's important to go out there and, uh, you know, find yourself in a fight. And uh, for young Callum Walsh, you know, he has yet to find himself in a fight necessarily, but it's not for a lack of effort. Uh, he's just putting them out uh, quick, and uh, we're going to see what he does coming up in our main event uh, here inside Commerce Casino. Tom, I appreciate your time. I'm going to let you get out of here, and I think uh, Abel, Doug, and I are going to talk a little bit more about this card and uh, get everyone uh, primed for Hollywood Fight Night, which again airs uh, this Saturday night, tonight, if you're watching it. on. If it's August 26th, it's tonight. Yeah, if it's absolutely. not August 26th uh, <laughs> and it's like past that, then check it out on demand because it's available for you on UFC Fight Pass. But uh, Tom, I appreciate you having us uh, be Thank involved you, in the TJ. show. Thank you, TJ. Always a pleasure to be with you guys here, and we're looking forward to have you on the on the telecast for the show. King Callum Walsh in action coming up on Saturday night. It's tomorrow as we record this. And uh, you know when King Callum takes the ring, uh, his uh, trainer, Freddie Roach, never too far behind. And Freddie, kind enough to join us here on Extra Rounds as we get ready for Hollywood Fight Night. Uh, Freddie King Callum Walsh, he's doing pretty damn well for himself. 7-0, six knockouts. Thriving in this main event spotlight, you know, you've worked with a lot of athletes over the years. And I'm, I'm curious if you think that, you know, Callum growing up in the spotlight has changed or had a different effect on him compared to, say, some of the other guys that come up through uh, the ranks, at, you know, the first seven fights where they're, they're not showcased as highly. Do you feel like th there's a, a maturation process or, or, or Callum is, um, you know, coming out differently or, or, or better being promoted the way that he is so young? Um, I, I like the way he's being pr promoted, and uh, you know he's very, very confident in, in himself. And he, uh, he like he says, Freddie, who's my next opponent? I said, Who do you want want to fight? And he says, I'll fight anybody. I said, I know you'll fight anybody. I said, But like, which one would you like? This style, that style? He said, Freddie, I don't care. He said, I'm gonna walk out, and knock him out. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he's very. He, He's very cocky, cocky and very confident with himself. You know, I think there's always that, that fine line between confidence and cockiness, and generally that line is success. If you, uh, you know, talk the talk but fail to walk the walk, people are going to say you're cocky. If you go out there and you get it done, then you, you're confident. But one thing I think, you know, Callum has been forced to sort of uh, be okay with fighting anybody because there's been a lot of fallouts, a lot of replacements through his, you know, career. And, and you, at the end of the day, I, I think you have to be ready to fight anybody on any given night. Definitely, and he and he's one of those guys that's ready to fight anybody, and he's he's got a great style, and he's uh, you know a little bit of a counter puncher at times, if need be. But the thing is, he's very aggressive at at sometimes also. When he w once he hurts you, uh, he will finish you. Yeah, you know, Doug, I'm I'm curious your thoughts. You know, uh, we got Freddie's thoughts on it, but do do you feel like being promoted the way that that Callum has been on Fight Pass has that had an effect on how he's matured as a boxer? Oh, absolutely. It's the activity. Yeah. Um, the fact that he he fights as often as he does. Um, he's he's very active for a modern fighter, even for a prospect. I mean, there, once upon a time, um, it wasn't. It wasn't out of the ordinary for even a world champion to fight maybe five or six times a year, but we're talking about 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, it really, in, in recent years, really since the, you know, since definitely since the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, like I'm going to say uh, once we were like sort of in the mid uh, 2010s, most world champions are fighting once or twice a year. 
um, and prospects who used to fight, you know, when, when Freddie was fighting, um, it, it was customary for a prospect to fight at least once a month. Right. You know, upon turning pro and maybe going into, you know, the first 24, first, uh, you know, uh, 36 months of his career, maybe the first year, he's fighting every month, and then you slow, you drop it down to, like, six times, mm. you know, a year. Um, and, uh, you know, that way, by the time... The, the prospect is ready to step up to eight rounders and, and ten rounders and, and take on legitimate contenders. They've faced enough styles. They've gone enough rounds. They've dealt with enough adversity, you know, whether it's a cut right. or a hurt hand or, you know, maybe they, they, they maybe drained themselves a little bit making weight or whatever. They experience all that stuff to where they're ready for anything by the time they step on that really big stage. Um, and we're seeing that with, with, with Callum because it's just been sort of microwaved. Like right. he's fought so often um, that based on the, the work that he's getting uh, at Wild Card with Freddie and the level of competition, it's just like, like Tom Loeffler um, and, and the fighter himself know, like, oh, hey, I can, I can fight a, a hard eight rounds. I can fight somebody that's been in there with world champions. And, and we're finally seeing that with his last two opponents. Um, I'm kind of curious um, if, um, if there's been an, uh, an opponent yet, Freddie, where you were maybe a little bit worried about what might happen um, so far in, in Callum's pr pro career. You know, you're always going to be a little bit careful, and there's always guys out there that maybe can punch a little bit harder than, than the rest of the guys. So you you, you, to, you know keep your hands up you know, have work on that defense and you know and the, the training camps will really really take that whole thing over over because if, if the guy is a big puncher and you know we will teach him what what what, what he what he needs to know and yeah basically for, for you know keeping your hands up and avoid getting hit and uh, and then uh, him hitting back is not usually a problem <laughs> right yeah you know looking at uh callum's last fight you talked about it doug you know you have to overcome adversity and you know for walsh he uh was cut pretty bad uh over his eye in his last fight after a clash of heads uh but man it, it seemed like that was almost the activator because <laughs> you know he, he came out and then you know really didn't mess around before too long after suffering that cut and by the way the cut man did a phenomenal job yeah it's mike rodriguez he yeah did a great job he, awesome job um but callum came out there and really wasn't deterred by it and, and Abel I'm I'm curious your thoughts on Callum's uh, ability to you know suffer a cut like that in a pro fight and really be unflappable he didn't look like he was rattled by that at all well that's uh, that's the question I have for Freddie uh, at the accelerated pace that Tom has him on uh, is the development not only physically but mentally is it on pace for you as uh, as fast as uh, Tom is moving him yeah you know because I know they're moving him fast and they, um, you know, they're putting him in with the better guys all the time. And, but the thing is, he wants that. that I mean, he really does. And like, he, if he can fight the best guy out there, he would, he would tell you. And, um, you know, and, and that's why, uh, you know, I say a world title fight might, might not be too far away because of his activity and the thing and what he wants. He, babe, you know, Basically, I'm saying he wants to be world champion for sure. Yeah, you know, and, and I look at Callum, 22 years old, doing a lot of things th the right way. Um, he is his own man, Freddie, but is he, does he remind you of anyone that you work with, uh, you know, at, at this young age or, or an advanced stage that you go, yeah, Callum Walsh is likely to turn out, you know, the, the way that this guy has? Yeah, I, I've had some fighters in, in the past who have come around, you know, like uh, Virgil Hill, Olympic silver medalist, and then winning a world title in, after a very short career. And, uh, you know, in, uh, they, 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 this kid is just like that, you know, because he, he, lo he, he loves to fight. And, you know, not everybody loves to fight. Right, yeah. Uh, so. But like you know, and then you talk about uh, like how many fights they fight a year and so forth now, and like if you can get four or five fights a year now, that's you're doing really really well. You're literally uh, you're ahead of the game. You're way ahead of the game yeah. now. I mean, uh, I fought eleven times my second year pro, <laughs> and uh, but the thing is that was a different era though. Right. Yeah. 
yeah. and thing is, but he's in the era that the is very tough opponents, and uh, you know, at, at that at the, at the, the one sixty marks, those guys they can punch and they can fight. You know, what's interesting about Callum is he says that uh, he doesn't even really bother looking at tape too much. He doesn't prepare uh, for, for who's in front of him. He just goes out there and fights. I, is that honest? Is, is that a bit of bluster? Or does he truly just not care who's standing in front of him, Freddie? He actually trusts me to watch the tape. Okay. And uh, I'll come up with a game plan, and he'll, 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 he'll follow my lead for, for sure. And, he's, and he's, he's very good at that. Yeah, I mean, you got Freddie Roach in your corner. You might as well let him do the tape study exactly. and follow yeah. the game plan. Um, yeah, now, fighters are different, though. I mean, right. some fighters, they want that. They they want to study tape, and it, it helps. It, it makes it makes them feel more prepared, yeah. right? I mean, they're, they're still going to listen to their corner, but they also want to be ready for whatever. Um, but other fighters um, doing that, it, it sometimes they prepare for something that doesn't show up on fight night. And I've heard fighters lament. They say, man, I wish I didn't watch that tape right. because that guy has never boxed like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. who, the, way, the way he boxed me, yeah. that's not how he, he boxed anybody else. And right. I was preparing for a defensive fighter. And instead, he came out and was a pressure fighter or vice versa or whatever. So it, it really depends on the opponent. Um, and and it, it depends on the individual. But um, with, uh, with Callum... Um, I think what helps him a lot is is not just his, his attitude, because he really doesn't give an F. Um, he is like a natural fighter, but he's facing so many different styles and, and levels of experience at wild card. It's kind of like he sort of knows he's ready. Like, he's faced really good southpaws. He's faced bigger guys with more experience. He's faced smaller guys who were faster and busier than him. Um, so he's like he's getting used to every conceivable style, just you know, with his regular sparring, even even before he's got a fight scheduled. Yeah, you know, the thing is, it's like you know, regular sparring and re and so forth and is upstairs. Downstairs is a little different. Yeah, you know, he's going he's going in against the best of the best. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys in his weight division that. Would like to fight him too, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the you know, the thing is, we, that, that remains to be for the, for the future, of course. But it does get him ready for for his fights, and he's he like if you ask him right now if he's very ready for this fight, and, and he'd say, "Yeah, of course I am." And they say, "Did you watch tape on this guy?" So, and he just like to smile and laugh at it a little bit. Right. He says, "Go ask Freddie." Yeah. No. I mean, again, you got Freddie Roach in your corner. You might as well let him do uh, the tape study and, and just follow the game plan. Uh, Freddie, I'm, I'm curious. Obviously, we see uh, Callum evolving before our eyes on Fight Pass and the main event spotlight time and time again. And, and each time, I think you know we we learn a little bit more about him and, and who he is as a boxer. You know, without giving away the game plan. Can you give us a preview or, or what to expect, uh, any sort of uh, maybe folds in his game that we haven't seen yet that you'd like to see come out in, in this fight? Well, you know, the thing is I want him to, to box a little, a little better and use his boxing ability and he work behind the jab a, a lot more and get the combinations and just don't go in there looking for the big, sh the big shot. Set it up and... Uh, He's getting he's getting better and better at that all the time. Abel, anything you want to say from Callum? Uh, no, it just uh, from a coach's standpoint, uh, he's a young buck still. But uh, having all that uh, great sparring in the gym and being able to to to, to study the guys that are in the gym helps him a lot to settle down. He's going to settle down. There's going to be a couple fights. Uh, we're going to see a different Callum, I'm sure, because uh, not only his gr he's growing up, but Freddie's going to slow him down and just make sure that he that he prepares everything instead of just being so anxious to get it done. Right. That youthful energy. Yes. You know, you gotta you gotta bottle that. I mean if you could bottle that and you know oh, uh, unleash it in your your fifties and sixties, <laughs> we'd all be millionaires. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. give me five percent of that. Twenty one the rest of our life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Freddie, I mean I, I think you uh you're a special breed because wild cards always bump and you get a lot of guys coming in and, and out of there. I saw you know Fabricio Verdum was, was in the gym this week doing some open yeah. workouts and whatnot. But you know, looking at this card, uh, there's multiple guys at, at wild card. You got Gory Uritsian on, on this uh, card. Um, he's a phenomenal fighter, Armenian champion. We've seen him, uh, you know, earlier this year. Uh, what should we expect from Gore in this fight? You know, Gore is a good puncher, and he hits really, he, he hits really hard, and he, he goes, he goes looking, look, look, looking for those big shots and stuff. I remember, like one day in, in the gym, 
uh, he went out, uh, just walked across the gym, hit the guy right hand, and I had a stopwatch on, and he he knocked the guy out for 17 minutes. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> I mean, scary! Wow. I, I, it, was, it, was, it was scary. I had to call the ambulance. Oh man! To, yeah. to make sure everything was okay. Everything was okay, and the the, the kid does come still boxes in, in my gym. Wow! But he doesn't box with Callum. <laughs> right. I mean. My, my goodness, I, uh, I've had naps that don't go that long. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Well, you know what I like about Gore is, um, is his technique. Um, yeah. uh, he's a good athlete, but I think he's a really good ring technician in there. Very textbook with his boxing form. He is, he is a textbook fighter. Very, very good form and uh, puts the combinations together very well. And you know, he's always lo looking to set, set something really good up for, uh, for, for the fight. And, uh, He's he's fun to watch. He really is. Yeah, I can tell he had an extensive amateur background. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a guy you can move fast as well, yes. and he, and he's mature as well. He's mature, yeah. big. Yeah, he's you know really really strong kid for the, the for that weight class. He punches really hard. Yeah, he and um, like I have to catch him on the mid sometimes. And I say, oh, this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> and we are back here inside Commerce Casino as we are getting ready for Hollywood Fight Nights. It goes down. Uh, tomorrow or today, if you're watching this on Saturday, uh, live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific on UFC Fight Pass. Please be joined now by one half of your main event. He is the WBC U.S. Silver Super Welterweight Champion, and the belt is prominently on display. King Callum Walsh, the uh, only man that is more uh, featured on uh, extra rounds than, than anybody. And uh, Callum, I think you might actually, I mean, I'd have to, you know, tabulate the results here, but... I, th I think you might be the most, you know, featured fighter in action on UFC Fight Pass, which is weird because people think MMA, but uh, you're a boxer and you're doing big things on the platform. Back at it again uh, tomorrow, this time defending uh, the championship. Man, what, what a ride it's been for you. And, and just tell me, you know, coming off that last win, you, you get that uh, title belt. Uh, what does that do uh, for y your mindset or does it even really have an impact on your mindset as you uh, continue this uh, pro campaign? Yeah, you know, nothing really changes for me. I just have to carry that belt around, you know. Uh, I just forgot it, actually. I left it out in the bushes there. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was eating my dinner and, or my lunch, and yeah, I left it in the bush. Had to go back and get it. But um, yeah, nothing changes in my mindset. You know, everything is the same. I'm still showing up to fight. I just have a belt now that I just have to carry around. Well, we saw uh, you win that belt not too long ago. We were talking with uh, your coach, Freddie Roach, uh, just a moment ago before you jumped on. And uh, we're all commenting on that, that cut uh, that, that you suffered in that fight. And, uh, man, I mean, it, you can't even see the scar. Like, whoever stitched you up did a phenomenal yeah. job. I've already forgotten which eye it was. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> remember either. Right there, yeah. yeah, they did a good job. Uh, you know, I got, I got caught, but sure. Who cares? They I mean, stitched no. it up like right after though, like right after yeah, the yeah, fight. Yeah, straight away. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think that's. Got it. I, but I didn't even know how to get stitched up. I got out of the ring. They were like, "Oh, you need to go get stitches." I was like, "What?" I didn't even know because yeah. I wasn't bleeding. Yeah, I right. wasn't bleeding at all. I just. Played. You got a good cut, man. Yeah, I played at the start. Obviously, when I first cut, but in that fourth round, it didn't bleed at all. Yeah. There was no blood on my face, and uh, yeah, I got out, and they were like, "You need to go get stitches," and I was like, oh, "I was probably tiny," and I went, and he was like, "You need like six or seven stitches." So I was bad enough, but. Can't even see it. No, he did a, he did a good job. It, and even though it wasn't bleeding, like, you knew to kind of step it up a notch, though. It wasn't bleeding in that round, but it seemed like you were like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna end the fight in this round. Yeah, I was getting warmed up in here. You know, I was after a couple of rounds, and I was getting warmed up, and I, I knew I could finish him. So I thought, why not just do it? I'm caught now. I might as well. And my hand was a bit sore, too. I know. <laughs> after the fight, my hand was swollen. I posted did you, like, like, hit him high in the head or something like that, or? He just had a hard head. He, well, yeah. <laughs> Guy had like more than 60 pro fights. I and um, not, I mean, he had some losses, but I don't, he didn't get stopped very often. No, nah, he was he was tough. And I, I knew that about him. You know, when I was punching him in the head, he was just taking him. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to break the body. And I just, I, that's what I did. I, I broke his body down and he couldn't take him anymore. And he just, that was it. You know, uh, you know, looking at that uh, fight and, and your ability to just turn it on and, and you know, get, get him out of there says a lot about your maturity level, I think. And, um, 
you know, we were talking with Freddie. Every time we see you come out, we, we see another fold in your, your game. Do you come into these fights with the uh, motivation to, sh you know, showcase or um, show any sort of, you know, trait that you haven't? Or is it just allow whatever c comes out to come out? Depends on the fight, you know, whether if it's a tough fight or like I'm 7 0, I haven't really had a fight yet. And also, you ha I, haven't had, I haven't had to show myself standing down and fighting, but I can, you know what I mean? I just do what, like, I try to mix it up when I'm fighting. I try to do different things or, or whatever. And um, this fight, I'm, I'm hoping we can stand down and throw a few punches. I want to show people that I can be in the pocket as well and, and stand there and, and do that. But obviously, if I can finish the fight early, I'll do that. And but all the, all these people talk about even my last opponent. You know, they want to bring me to deep water because I haven't been there. Before. Right. I'll like, I'll go to deep water, no problem. You know what I mean? If if, if I do about eight rounds, I'm just getting warmed up. Might as well just stay in there. Forever. The sparring at wild card is deep water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Even, even just, like, I sparred 11, 12 <laughs> rounds, um, like, two weeks ago. And I was after eight rounds, and I felt fine. And, and this uh, this other fighter was coming in to do rounds me, and he was like, oh, you've you've a lot done. Like, uh, I'll take it easy. And, uh, I'm, I'm not a dickhead. I was like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> but I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'd done another couple of rounds, and he was just, I, I stopped him myself. Like, after, I was after, like, 11, 12 rounds, I was like, ah, that's enough, because... Yeah, I don't need to be doing that to somebody anymore. So, <laughs> but that's the thing, though. They take me to deep water, I'll, I'll be there. You know? Well, There's I mean, opponents try to take you to deep water and then find out that they they're drowning before <laughs> they get there yeah, themselves. Yeah, they can't you know? get it, yeah. I, I have to imagine your opponent tomorrow is going to want to do that. He's somebody that um, has has been in there with world class opponents like Regis Progre, and I remember that fight. And um, he and, and Progre they were fighting in the pocket. It was inside fighting, and they went toe to toe for. a bunch of rounds i think progre got him out of there in the seventh or eighth round or whatever but it it took a punisher like progre some rounds to break this guy down um is that something that motivates you when you know your opponent is, is has a reputation for being tough uh, has a reputation for taking world-class fighters rounds is that motivation i just want to do it better than them you know like i want to prove that i'm better and that's what i did with my last opponent too i got him over in four rounds and i don't think anybody done that to him so i want to prove with this guy too you know just get him out of there as quick as I can and just show that I'm I'm better than all these other guys and that I'm going to go in there and I hate harder, you know. I've seen him get hurt to the body and, and nobody punches the body like me. You've seen my fight. I'm a big body puncher. And once I start landing on him, he's not going to stand around. You're sneaky to the body, too. They don't seem to, they they don't anticipate it. I'm only 22, but, you know, you want to be years at it and yeah. I'm doing it since I'm six, so. You mentioned your age and, you know, you, you are growing up before our, our very eyes, but you had the opportunity, I think, to grow up uh, in front of yourself recently uh, on Dana White's looking for a fight. The uh, Boston fight that you had back in March on uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend was featured prominently. The numbers for that episode are absolutely huge. What was it like watching yourself, uh, you know, on display, you know, in an episode of, of Dana White's looking for a fight? Yeah, it was crazy. You know, I, I, I didn't even expect it, to be honest. I was like, ah, he'll probably just give me a little bit or something, but... I was on it for a while. Yeah. Even all yeah. the boys trying to trying to beat my high score and they couldn't. And uh, getting that five grand as well. But uh, yeah, you know, it was, yeah, it was a good show. I enjoyed it. And just just Dana White, you know, just uh, like I always say, I've been watching Dana for years because I'm a massive UFC fan. You know, when he was when Conor McGregor was coming up and they were all there, I've been watching UFC and Dana for as long as I can remember. And now to be just watching myself with Dana is like it's it's weird. It doesn't feel real, but it is. <laughs> like I said, you're the most prominent uh, fighter and athlete, I think, uh, you know, featured on the, the Fight Pass platform. And, uh, you know, I, I'm an MMA fan, first and foremost. I come from the world of mixed martial arts. And, you know, boxing has been, uh, you know, auxiliary in, in my fight uh, fandom. Uh, but you are, are making, I think, MMA fans get more and more excited uh, about boxing, uh, you know, with that Dana White connection. Uh, do you feel like you're representing the, the MMA fans? Because I feel like they've attached themselves to you. You know, a lot of people that don't normally watch boxing, they're tuning in for your fights on Fight Pass. Yeah, definitely. You know, because because I'm a massive UFC fan, I'm bringing the same thing. You know, I'm I'm trying to fight whoever I can. I'm trying to sh I'm showing up. And I'm fighting anyone. Yeah. I'm not I'm not picking and choosing. I'm not one of the boxers that's wants an easy path. You know, I, I never took an easy path to get to where I am. So why why would I start now? I'm even telling Thomas, you know, I want I want bigger step ups. You know, I want I want to fight the best. And the thing about me is, I'm so young. You know, everybody's afraid to lose. Everybody yeah. in boxing, everybody's afraid to take that. You know, lose their all or whatever. But like, I don't care. Like obviously I'm not planning on losing, but I don't. I, like I couldn't care less because if it's at the top level, right, since I'm right. so young, 
Yeah. If I get to the top level and see where I'm at, I take a loss, I, I don't care, I'll get back in the gym and I'll, I'll come back, you know. For me, that's, that's how I'm thinking of my career, you know. I, I want to fight the best and I want to see how good I actually am. Because you don't know until you actually get in there and, and see. Everyone, even a while ago, somebody asked me, I was like, oh, how do you see yourself in your in the, your weight category now? And I said, I have no idea, you know, I haven't fought, like, I need to fight them to find out. And if I get beaten, like, I'll go back in the gym and I'll, I'll come back again in a year or when I get a bit older and, but... Everybody's afraid to lose, and I'm not. You know what I mean? So you I'll know, put it on the line. That'll that'll yeah. give you fans, MMA fans, and boxing fans, because boxing fans are definitely tired of the 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 champion businessman. Where it's like yeah. they they choose to lay out and just wait for a big payday rather than stay active and rather than challenge themselves. And um, so that's a good thing. Um, you've definitely been. Um, interfacing with MMA fans um, in, in ways that I can't, I can't think of a, a, a boxer before you that was, you know, going to as many UFC shows and doing shows like this and, you know, um, you know, palling around with Dana White. I can't think of anybody. I mean, I know there have been boxing boxers who are MMA fans, and I know there have been boxing champions that – MMA fighters um, respect it. Like, I think Gennady Golovkin was like that. That was somebody you, you would hear a lot of MMA fighters say, man, I like that guy. I like to watch that guy, and I respect him. And the respect was mutual. But do you think that there will come a time where you're, you're fighting, you're, you're headlining in a big arena, and that arena is filled with um, mostly MMA fans, not, not so much, you know, boxing fans. Definitely you'll have your b boxing fans there, but that um, you're going to have a lot of – butts in the seats and um there might be circles in boxing who are saying where who is this guy <laughs> like where did he get all these fans from yeah yeah no I, I do think you know there'll be a lot of mma fans come to see me fight because they know i'm showing up to fight you know what i mean it's not going to be some fucking two boys running around and trying to catch each other and right. jabbing for the first five rounds you know i'm gonna go in there and just i i'm training for this like i don't understand boxers that go in and they're trying to feel each other out for a couple of rounds like you're training for 12 rounds you should be fit to go in there and just fight for 12 rounds and i'm not afraid to get hit i'm not afraid to stand down i'm not afraid of anybody so i'm just gonna go in there and see what happens that's i'm I, i'm just taking a fight by fight and just see what happens like even for this fight i don't even have a game plan yet i'm just gonna go in and just see what happens i'm just it's just a fight you know i've been fighting my whole life and i think that's why like i'm not too worried about it you know i'm just gonna go in and fight and just See what happens, get the job done. If I have to fight 10 rounds, I'm, I know I'm fit for 10 rounds. I'll do that. Or if I feel like I can get them out of there nice and early, I'll just pack him in and go home and chill out. Like I said, after my last fight, things to do. And I'm planning on going fishing after this fight. There you go. We're going to get into that here, I think, uh, in a moment, because I'm curious what you're fishing for. But one thing I want to say is, you know, the, the idea that you're taking MMA fans and in, in turning them into boxing fans, what you're actually doing, in my mind, is you're taking MMA fans and turning them into combat sports fans. And, right. you know, that we're starting to look at combat sports as more a whole than just individual, you know, styles of, of fighting. And that's really what UFC Fight Pass is all about. I mean, it's not just MMA. It's, it's boxing. It's jujitsu. It's, right. it's even wrestling. Um, you know, I want to get back to the promoting angle, though, uh, Tom Loeffler. You uh, obviously are, are the one lining up these fights for Callum. Uh, he's not afraid to take on anybody, uh, anytime, anywhere. That youthful exuberance uh, on display time and time again. But, you know, when you are putting together a fight card and, and lining up an opponent uh, for Callum, does it ever catch you off guard when you see this 7-0 kid taking on a guy who's got 30-plus, 30 35 fights? You know, like, It seems to be that more often than not, promoters would look at that as a gamble. Your mindset seems to be different when it comes to young Callum. No, absolutely. Uh, Callum's headlined now. This will be his uh, seventh uh, UFC Fight Pass show that he's headlined. Yeah. And uh, he knows that if he's on TV, on UFC Fight Pass, especially headlining it, he's got to be in a, a competitive fight. And uh, so far... You know, it's a fine line of uh, building a young fighter like Callum and learning from every fight and not wanting to overmatch them. But so far, uh, Callum and Freddie have never turned down an opponent. So we're excited about that. Uh, this is a great uh, challenge for, for Callum. It's his first uh, uh, title defense, which is always kind of elevates everything. And I'll tell you, TJ, just to go back to what you were talking about before as far as cross-marketing, that's really our plan when I was talking to Dana cross-marketing Callum on the boxing side with the UFC fans. And the UFC fans are only going to tune in if he's in an exciting fight. Right. Or if, right. A, if, if it's an exciting boxing fight. And Callum understands that. You know, he trains with, uh, you know, Tony Ferguson 
has been there, and, and uh, he, he's friends with a lot of uh, UFC fighters. And when we were there in Boston last week, mm. and after that, looking for a fight episode with Dana White came out. I mean, fans were coming up to him outside the TD Garden, inside the TD Garden, they were coming up to him. And I really saw, since he fought there in March, such a huge um, step up in terms of his recognition. Yeah. And so the formula is definitely working where the UFC fans are coming up to a boxer and asking for his photo. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to uh, be the businessman by any means here, but U UFC 5, the video game's coming out. Like, I just got to think that Cal <laughs> Walsh has got to be in the game. I want to fight in UFC myself. Yeah, I'll right. I, I want to do it. You know, yeah. obviously, uh, boxing is my main priority now, but eventually, like, I'm being a UFC fan my whole life. I don't think I can go my whole career without getting in the cage and just, mm -hmm. like I said, just see what happens. I'll probably get smashed, but <laughs> <laughs> just see, <laughs> see, yeah. see what happens. Well, I, no, I just want to get in there. Like, I, I do. I cross-train. No, that's right. the thing. Like, I train with Tony. I train, like, when I go back home at SPG, you know, I'm training. So, mm -hmm. like, it's, I know how to do some. So, obviously, I, I respect the sport enough to know that I can't just walk in there. <laughs> right. You know? right. That's why I'm not trying to do it right now. Boxing right. is my main priority, but, like... In a few years, like if I just keep cross training and just see what happens, I, I'd love to get in there and like, cause all UFC fighters are going to boxing. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You want to do it the other way? I want to do it the other way and just <laughs> see what happens. I mean, you got time on your side. You're 22 years old. I think about the great Randy Couture. Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't make his UFC debut until he was 35. Yeah. So, I mean, you got plenty of time. Uh, I mean, you can have a full on, you know, rise to the top of the boxing world and, uh, you know, make sure that that check from the UFC has got more zeros on it when you uh, <laughs> make the transition. It's not even about the money, to be honest. I just want to do it for myself. You know, I just want to just win everything I can in boxing and then be big enough to be like, fuck it, I want to fight a UFC fighter. I want to just, I want to have a big fight in, in the UFC and get in the cage and just be in there and just have a good time. And that's the mindset, I think, that is, uh, you know, captivating fans uh, from the MMA world as well as the boxing world. And uh, the next chapter, again, uh, live on UFC Fight Pass. It is Hollywood Fight Nights. You see uh, King Calum Walsh defend that WBC U.S. Silver Championship in your main event. And uh, Calum, we're going to be tuned in. Best of luck uh, in the fight. And uh, Thank thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate it. I want to thank our guests, Freddie Roach, Tom Loeffler, and, of course, King Callum Walsh as he gets ready to defend his WBC U.S. Silver Championship in our main event. TJ DeSantis, Doug Fisher, Abel Sanchez, live inside the Commerce Casino as we get ready for Hollywood Fight Night. And uh, before we uh, sign off here, I want to talk about this exciting uh, six-fight card uh, in, in some ways that we haven't yet. Obviously, you know about uh, our main event uh, let's talk about our co-main event. It's been switched to a catchweight. Umar Chambekov, he is back in action. Nine-time Austrian champion. Coming off a really tough fight just uh, about a month ago right. up at, at Chumash. Um, you know, we talk about the uh, activity level of these athletes. It's one thing to go out there and, uh, you know, stop someone early. It's another thing to go out there and, and put in, you know, some hard rounds and earn a decision where, I mean, honestly, you know, Chambekov found himself in a fight. He did drop yeah. some rounds to his opponent that night, uh, but he came out the other side getting his hand raised. Uh, what should we expect from Chambekov, you know, turning it around so quickly after, you know, having a, a pretty tough fight last time out? I think it's going to make him a better fighter. I think um, it's always good for um, a, a young fighter or a fighter who, who just recently turned pro um, to go he and fall last in six or eight rounds. And that last fight, fight was he, was, he was not I just mean, in with a tough uh, opponent. He was in with a fellow prospect work. guy who was, was undefeated. Was, was, um, was guy a was tough guy, but I think uh, uh, just the guy, uh, you know. I was just too much for The dude him. passed the I eye test, right? I mean, he was an Adonis. He was athletic. He had quick twitch, you know, he had a good good right hand. Um, and you could tell there was some pop there. And you could tell that um, both of those, both fighters, Jambekov and his opponent, they they had to respect each other. So um, they couldn't just go in there and 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 bully um, their their opposition. Um, they 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 didn't know who was the better talent. Right. It had to play out in the ring, and, and that meant they had to think a little bit. And, and what I saw from Umar was that he was trying to figure out this guy's style because the guy was a switch hitter. Yeah. And his last name was Ritter. It yep. kind of, remi it kind Ritter. of rhymed yep. with uh, switch hitter, Ritter yep. the switch hitter. So he had to kind of figure that out and, and, and deal with a guy who was quick on the trigger and actually and had some power. So a guy who could, could hurt him if he, if he catches him right. And it was Umar who figured out, I can, I can touch this guy with, with my jab. I mean, you know, Umar's a southpaw. So touch him with the right hand to the chest or the stomach. And then I can, I, I can touch him with a hard punch, a hard left. And he was the one who started um, actually letting his power hand go 
with authority. Um, Ritter was had a nice right hand, and he showed it in the opening round. Um, but he didn't let it go enough to to win enough rounds to to really be in the fight. But he was in the fight, and um, I think going through that, kind of having some like early round doubts, yeah. and having to figure out, get through that, kind of fight through that, and figure out your opponent's tricky style. That's going to give him more confidence going into this fight because tonight he's he's fighting the most experienced pro of, of his pro career. Yeah, you know, looking at uh, that Kwame Ritter fight you mentioned for, for Umar, it, it came down to fight IQ and the adjustments that were made down the stretch. And um, you, know, you talk about confidence level. Like, Abel, I, I agree with Doug, you know, wholeheartedly. Umar Trembekov found himself in a tough fight, but he's so much better for it because he knows if he is, for some reason, uh, you know, down early in any fight uh, upcoming that he, he can rely on his fight IQ and, and, you know, ability to adjust to, you know, take the fight back and put it in his side. You know, uh, a lot of guys come into a fight, as Ritter did, uh, with a 10-0 record, and sometimes when you watch him, the fight develops, they're not really 10-0. Ritter was 10-0, and right. his, his, his skills showed us that he was 10-0 for a reason. Uh, Umar had to think a little bit. Umar had to adjust a little bit. And as Doug said, it be, he, they become better fighters because of that. Now, when that kind of style presents itself again, he will have a better idea on what to do. He had six rounds to figure that out. He, uh, uh, he did the best at figuring out each other to, 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 to be able to win the fight. Yeah, so we will see Umar Chambekov in our co-main event, a catchweight contest as he takes on uh, David Zagara. Uh, another athlete to keep your eye on, uh, Freddie Roach mentioned him uh, a little bit, the Armenian uh, national champion, Gory Ritsian. Uh, he's a knockout artist. He's uh, definitely someone to keep your eye on. Don't blink when he takes the ring. Uh, you know, I, I say this time and time again at these Hollywood uh, fight night shows. Uh, he, he's another one. He's must-see TV. Yeah. Uh, listen, I like knockouts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Everyone you know, does, I think, We right? showcase a lot of yes. fights. Yeah. We showcase, you know, five and six fights every broadcast. And they can't all go the distance. Right. Uh, you know, right. We need some knockouts in there. And um, the crowd always, you know, reacts to a knockout. But, uh, yeah, what I like about Gore is that, um, you know, he's not just a bruiser. He's not a slugger in there. He is a really good technician, um, good, good amateur background. He's placing those punches. He's setting them up right. And um, I think he's, he's got a really good opponent in front of him. I mean, just looking at Gore's record, I would say this guy's probably, he's definitely the most experienced opponent. We'll find out tomorrow if, if it's going to be his toughest opponent. But um, I've seen this guy fight before. Um, he's, a, he's a competent fighter. He's a veteran. He's from the Philippines. Um, he's fought outside the Philippines. He's fought in Russia. He's fought in Mexico. He's fought in the U.S. before. He's fought on some, some really big cards, so I don't think he's going to be intimidated um, and I think that's what Gore needs. Gore, before Gore's last fight in, in June, um, he'd been out of the ring for two and a half years. Right. He didn't show any signs of ring rough. He looked right. really sharp. Took yeah. the guy out in like two rounds. But um, I think um, he needs some professional resistance before making that next step. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a great testament to the schooling, to the amateur uh, schools in, in uh, not only Armenia, but uh, Kazakhstan's got a great programs. Uh, he's a very solid fighter, great fundamentals. And like Dougie said, the two years off didn't make a difference because of his fundamentals, because of his schooling. Yeah, and he's a guy, you know, that I think uh, may have come back better for having the time off. Sometimes that happens for athletes to, to get away from active competition. And uh, it's clear he's an athlete. He's a specimen. He's a guy that uh, I can't imagine while he was maybe away from active competition, wasn't away from the gym. Oh, no, uh, he's, he's a gym rat. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can tell. And uh, we'll see him uh, in action. We've uh, already talked about uh, a former main event fighter here. At Hollywood Fight Nights, Adana Choa, he is back. Um, he was in a, almost a, a fight when it came to the stare down today at the <laughs> weigh-ins. There was some uh, bad blood between himself and uh, Arnold Alejandro. Um, you know, Adana Choa, he came to fight against Omar Trinidad, and you know we talked about it. You know, he didn't get his hand raised that night, uh, but he proved to be you know a worthwhile competitor and someone that uh, if he's on the card, I want to watch and. Uh, the bad blood, at least uh, on display today at weigh-ins, like you can't see two guys getting each other's faces like that and not want to see them throw down, and we're going to see it tomorrow night. It, you know, it was the same thing when um, during the buildup for his fight against Omar Trinidad is like whenever they occupied the same space, they right. were like roosters. Yeah. So I think Adon is just kind of wired like that, and w which is how Omar Trinidad is, and that's why I like Omar so much. Um, and Adon is a really likable guy, and I'm – Glad he's getting a second chance to come back because 
he showed us enough in that loss to to Omar Trinidad that um, to to let us know that he's got potential. Yeah. Um, a he took some heavy punches. Right. Because. Trinidad is a destroyer. He's a yeah, soul Yeah, we saw taker. that last time out. Oh, man. he hammers oh, guys. Goodness. Yeah, I mean, he knocks out guys that had never been knocked out before. Uh, and uh, Ochoa took he took a lot of punishment, and he did he did his best to to dish some punishment out right. of, of, on his own. And he also showed a lot of uh, a lot in the way of ring generalship. He's he's a good boxer. He knows his way around that ring. Um, and I talked to him at the at the media workouts um, a couple weeks ago, and and you know he said that. Um, he could have done more had he been more active going into that fight. He'd been out of the ring for a while. Uh, so there was – ring rust was a factor um, with, with his performance. Um, and um, he made a, a tough choice after that loss, and um, he, he changed trainers. Um, you know, he, he left a, a veteran ch- uh, trainer named uh, Clemente Medina that I know well. And I know that had to be hard yeah, for him. I think that's really difficult, difficult for, for fighters because it's not like there was any sort of bad blood between he and Clemente. He just – Figure he just felt that Clemente didn't have the, the the time to really focus on him, and maybe that he had learned all that he can learn from Clemente. Um, and he's made the switch to Marvin Simodio, which has taken him to the Wild Card Boxing Club, which is like you know, really the premier right. boxing gym in the greater LA area. It's like it's the hub where all fighters go and spar, and and but the the fighters who train there, they're there is a certain camaraderie there where it's like, you know, once you become a wild card fighter, they got each other's backs. Right. And he's experiencing that and he likes it. He's never had that before. Um, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm expecting a rejuvenated fighter. I'm expecting to see more from him, but also more in the way of confidence. You, you say uh, the, that the camaraderie, I mean, Abel, this is a, a sport where, yeah, it's, it's one-on-one, but without the team dynamic, no one really ever makes it to fight night their best. You, you have to rely on your teammates. Uh, and of course, but also, too, he's not the big dog or the, or, or the, the main dog in the right. gym. Now yeah. he's one of the runts, so it, it gives you a little more... Uh, uh, and you put more emphasis on your training to be training like those other guys. But you know what's important? I think that these young fighters uh, know that if they put up the kind of fight that the promotion uh, is looking for, they're going to be rewarded with a fight back to, to, to try to prove themselves in another fight. So I'm glad that Adon is back. He, he gave us a great fight against uh, Omar, and I'm glad he's back. And he's in against a real dude. I mean, he's in a guy, a guy. What's his record? Eleven, 11 and one, one with ten yeah. knockouts. Yeah. So he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to be on his p's and q's. Yeah, and while uh, uh, Adon is a, a local guy, there were a lot of Texas uh, uh, natives, I think, in the crowd at weigh-ins today because uh, it was his opponent that uh, came out and got some cheers, louder cheers, I think, even than than uh, Ochoa did. So uh, we'll see how the fight uh, plays out coming up uh, here on Hollywood Fight Nights. Uh, also on this card, uh, Daniel Chucky Barrera. He's a, a fun fighter uh, to watch. We saw him recently. That's the thing, too. He was real sharp, too. Yeah, Man, really got, good. Got rid of his opponent like that. But the dude he's fighting tomorrow night is um, by far his most experienced opponent. This guy uh, is a veteran of 38 fights. Um, and none of his previous opponents had any experience. I mean, the combined record of his, his last four opponents is like, you know, it's like it, it amounts to 13 fights. Yeah, so wow. he's been in there with a guy, and this guy's been in there with really good fighters too. So it's like, um, you know, hey, I mean, this guy's been in there with former world champions. He's been in there with uh, Rashi Warren. He's been in there with uh, Andrew Maloney. He's been in there with, um, you know, legitimate, you know, Experience. world level guys, right? You know, and he hasn't beaten these dudes, but he's taken them rounds. You know, so this is a guy who is a, a solid at the eight and ten round level, and has even even gone twelve rounds against a dude who's still fighting on the four round level who right. only has four fights. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it's a huge step up. In fact, I would I'm going to just say on paper Chucky Barrera is taking the biggest step up in competition um, more than anybody else on the card. Um, I think what's going to help him is that this fight is only scheduled for four rounds. So, I mean, he's used to going four rounds, but I think it's going to be imperative for him to set the pace, set the tempo on this guy, set a fast pace. Because you don't want to let a veteran like that get uh, right. get in the groove. Yeah. Well, you know, coming into uh, the pro ranks, he uh, with the very high expectations from him. Yeah, he had a speed bump. He had a speed bump a couple of fights ago, and it could have been the rewind button. It could have been going back to wait a minute. I got to slow my 
trajectory of what I think right. my projection is going to yeah. be. I got to slow down a little bit. I got to get back to basics. And right. I think You're talking about that draw he yes. had. Yes. yes. The quiet cannon. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, that kind of, it, it, um, it brought him back to earth. Yeah. <laughs> I think he, 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 he might have been right. reading the, yeah. you know, uh, they used to say read your clippings, but then right. nobody does that anymore. Yeah. Whatever. You're, you're, I don't know what you clip you're, anymore. You're right. You know, whatever. You're, you're, you're buying into the hype. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, he's been better. Yes. Technically, he's been boxer first, then puncher. Yeah. Very and, sharp. Which has led to knockouts. Very sharp in his last fight. Oh, man. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. Uh, big things come in small packages. And if you need uh, uh, any proof of that, look at Gloria Munguia, uh, you know, a uh, hundred and you know, some odd pounds, a very, very small athlete. But, man, I would not want to get hit by her. You know, she comes out to fight. She got that sneaky right hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's uh, in action kicking off the UFC fight pass card against Shana Ormsby. Um, you know, if, if anybody hasn't seen, uh, you know, a, a woman who, I mean, really like is fighting like one. 12 something yeah, like that yeah. yeah flyweight yeah that that to me like wow like she she's got to hit triple that pounds per square inch i think when she lands uh and uh she takes on shauna ormsby um you know don't take my word for it if you tune in you're gonna see a lot of glory among gia tune uh, in early yeah she, she's yeah. the opening bout on the card and and she sets the the tone for the rest of the evening no absolutely i mean she's capable of uh you know stealing fight of the night honors uh, every time she goes out there she's in a five-round fight uh kicking off the card and uh like I said, must-see TV. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And uh, it's always must-see TV when you got a guy like Doug Fisher and Abel Sanchez on the call. I'm riding their coattails. I'm TJ DeSantis. Hopefully, you will join us for Hollywood Fight Nights. Again, it is live 6 p.m. at Pacific, August 26, which hopefully is tonight if you're watching this. And if it's not, you've missed it, go check it out. Always available on demand anytime at UFC Fight Pass. For Doug and Abel, again, I'm TJ. We'll see you at the fights here inside Commerce Casino.